Oh, what's going on, everybody? Hope you guys are having a good day. Thank you all for tuning in. Today, we're going to be talking about some comics. What's going on, everyone in the house so far? K. O'Hearn, good afternoon. What's going on, buddy? JV Entertainment, yo, what's going on? Everybody else that's in right now, I hope you guys are all having a good day. And uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about all the books coming out for February 22nd, two, uh, 2023's new comic book day. we got a really solid list of books coming out this week. I'm really excited to talk about them with you guys. Uh, give it a second, let some other folks join in, and we can get this party started. Let me raise that camera just a little bit. There we go. Cool. Good stuff. All right, guys, what's going on? Sha Sean Ali, what's going on, everybody? And yeah, all right, let's get this party started. Cool. All right, so as I said before, we're going to be talking about all the upcoming new releases for February 22nd, new comic book day. we got a lot of really good stuff. Let's, uh, just like last week, we're going to go over all the smaller indie publishers first. Comic Core, what's going on, buddy? And then we'll jump into uh, pretty much everything else. I'll leave the other up, too. Mm -hmm. So what's going on? What, what, uh, what books are you guys looking forward to this week? Demarius Gray, what's going on, bro? Wow, that's all, like I said, there's a Jesus, there's a ton of books coming out this week. Oh my god, tons of stuff. All right, we'll just go through them eventually. Let's see. Is that Comic Geeks you use to track books? Yeah, uh, League of, League of Comic Geeks dot com is the one that I use. I think it's a really good website. I that's the one that I prefer to use. Something is killing children. Ah, oh, that's definitely gonna be a fun one this week. Super pumped for Immoral X Men. See, the thing with <clears throat> we'll get to it obviously, but the thing with X Men is like they just keep going on with so much, so many new like different events and just. Uh, titles that they've been pumping out a lot of tie-ins stuff like that but i'm really you know i'm hoping this is a good one for you guys too all right hugh what's going on hope you're doing well tonight too buddy all right so uh if there's anything as always if there's anything you guys want me to go over a little bit more in depth just let me know and we can we can cover those a little bit more uh but just right off the bat i think it's really cool frank miller presents uh, I did not read the other Ronin when they came out with it, but I think this one has a uh, – oh, wow, this one's got a seven ninety nine price tag on it. I think the first one was only – I don't know if it was just a preview, but I thought it was just a couple a couple bucks from what I remember. So did we get delayed until tomorrow? I'm guessing for Collectible Warrior, for which book? Super tough to catch up with the Krakoa stuff. Oh, my God. See, that's, that's been the problem with X-Men is there's so much crap going on. And uh, some of the other people I talk to, they say the exact same thing. It's just like, there's too much to keep up with. We either got to catch it, we got to read all the tie-ins, pick it up eventually. But uh, it's been a little bit more of a hassle for a lot of my X-Men fans out there. There is a criminally low amount of alien UFO books. Some who, oh man, the blue book. I'm actually really excited for that too. I had no idea uh, that it was written by Tiny and, and it was going to be, I think it's based on like real events too. So it's, I'm really excited for that one. Mets fan, awesome channel AR, I'm 52 and just started collect comics, I feel like I'm late to, oh dude, you're never too late to the party, never too late, I, I've read comics when I was a lot younger, and then, you know, I got a little bit older, started playing basketball and other sports, high school happened, college happened, military happened, and I re-picked it up while I was in the military, and it started off with just Omnis, and I was like, oh nice, you know, I'm gonna get these, I'm gonna grab the stuff that I used to read when I was a kid, and it just turned into, you know, everything from there. So it's definitely not too late. John, what's going on, bro? I hope you're doing well tonight. Thank you for tuning in, buddy. I wasn't going to I wasn't gonna be sticking on this one for too long, uh, but I just wanted to say a lot of people have been really happy with this one. I didn't read the first issue. This is the one that I'm... Oh, my God. I can't, I can't talk about this company enough. AWA Upshot, guys. AWA Upshot is one of the best comic book publishers, in my opinion, on the market. They consistently just put out just banging ass books. Like there's, it's almost as if at this point I just feel like they can do no wrong. Although Trojan has just been okay, uh, I don't have a huge, I don't have a lot of expectations for it. I'll put it that way. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it like 
as is. But fuck, Year Zero has been one of my favorite series that I've read in a long time. So this is a prequel. If you guys, if you guys aren't caught up in this series, Year Zero Volume Zero. This is this, the last one of the series too. So this is a prequel. It's how the zombie apocalypse kind of started. I don't want to say they haven't really got into how it started, so I don't want to say that. It's more of a you get to see the world kind of go into a frenzy. They're starting to find out that like something is going on in the world, but no one knows what it is. But there are some characters in the series that know there's some sort of like zombie outbreak happening. But everyone else is kind of just treating it like there's this virus going around. Uh, but everyone is just slowly going crazy. So this is a this is a really good read. This but the thing is, with, because this is a prequel, you can start with it. I still would suggest starting with the other stuff, though. Volume 1, Volume 2, you could read them however the way you want to, but uh, Volume 0 is just, damn, it's just been so damn good. Dairy Bandit, this week's going to be stacked. Dude, it is going to be stacked. There, There's just so much shit coming out this week. Uh, he says, I've loved everything I've picked up from AWA. Like, no, no bullshit. AWA is... They're really good. I don't understand how they just consistently keep putting out bangers like this. And if you've been following me from pretty much the beginning of this channel, I've never been a big fan of just these small mini series. I've always kind of felt that they were a little bit waste of money uh, because it was kind of just, you know, never really leading to anything. And because it's only four or five issues, in my opinion, it's usually not the best ending. A lot of it feels rushed, but not with AWA. It's like everything that they're putting out with is just... They're really doing a great job on it. John, AWA Rules, loved Redemption. Redemption was really, was it Redemption the one? Let's double check. I just want to make sure I know which one that is. I think it's the, yeah, dude, that one was so cool too. Man, I forgot about Redemption. They did that one. Uh, Bad Mother was one that came out, I think, around the same time as well. Always good ones. Uh, I got one and two, but not zero. Ah, oh, Demarius, definitely check out zero. I, In my opinion, I'm going to be real with you. I think zero has been one of my favorite. I think it's my favorite volume of them so far, depending on how this one wraps up, because obviously you've read the other ones. It's kind of like you're just following around a random group of people. Uh, but I really like to see like the descent into the craziness of the world going to shit. So that's been a lot of fun. Jesus, KO, getting about 40 books to look at tomorrow. And then Sloshberries, I own literally every paperback and one shot they've put out to date. You could say I'm a fan too. Redemption was the steampunk water wars. Dude, I I have a fat stack of their trade paperbacks as well. And for the most part, I buy all their single issues. I I can't hype them up enough, seriously. SMK, what's going on? Uh, but like I said, this is year zero. It's only got a cover A. This is the prequel. It's the final one to the series, which means a trade paperback's on the way too. Trade paperbacks... Best way to go for them, hands down. Uh, other than that, I don't, I don't want to say there's a ton of shit that I'm looking forward to. We'll talk about Liquid Kill. It's a new one from Whatnot. I'm not going to be picking it up, though. Um, mainly because I'm like 0 for 3 at this point with them. But it says Liquid Kill. Uh, Slate is slaughtering vigilantes as they encounter pure evil in a blood-soaked cyberpunk future. Ghost in a Shell meets John Wick. Eh. That's whatever. I'm kind of looking forward to heavy metal. Whatnot better not screw it up. Oh, see, Winter, dude. I'm... I feel you on that. I really do. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it. Uh, it's... Oh, heavy metal's cool. And Whatnot's not really that cool. I, I'm not a fan of a lot of stuff they come out with. Every time, I'm really excited. Like, the way that they hyped up this series, Ninja Funk, the way that they hyped this up, I was like, yo, this is about to be either the biggest pile of dog shit or it's going to be an absolute banger. I, I felt like there was no in-between with how they hyped this series up, and it was garbage. Now, I want to know, if there's anyone watching anyone watching right now that has kept up with the series, I would love to know what your thoughts on it are, like if it's gotten better, because, I mean, we're four issues deep, and I will admit I only read the first issue. I, I really, really thought it was bad, though. Like, there was no way around it. The best thing to me that comes out of whatnot is their covers. Their covers are usually pretty damn cool. So I, at least I'll give them that. Like, they always have Kirkman on one. Uh, like this one. Like, this is a really cool cover, I think. Like, that cover is probably so much cooler than the actual series. But like I said, if you're reading if you're reading Ninja Funk, I want to know what you think about it. Because I, I don't know anyone that's reading it. Outside of, like, 
outside of the people that whatnot pays to talk about their shit, I don't know anyone that's reading this series anymore. Um, so if you know who, I mean, pretty much, you'll know who whatnot is paying because they keep hyping this shit up. But it's been, to me, utter garbage. Uh, so Liquid Kill, they got some cool-looking covers as well. Like I said, I will always give them props for that. And this is David Mack, yeah. I always give them props on covers. They do a great job on them. They look really cool. But So it looks like it's going to be a cyberpunk futuristic series, Ghost in the Shell meets John Wick. Eh, that sounds like it's going to be up your alley. Go check it out. I'm not going to be checking it out, though. Uh, this one... We can hop into this one just real quick, only because I'm assuming my shop picks it up. I am going to be uh, grabbing this one. Let's see. Uh, Redemption with Steam. <coughs> Ooh, sorry about that. <coughs> oh. Oh, man, that was crazy. <coughs> Ooh. What not? They heard me. <coughs> They heard me talking that shit. Let's see. <clears throat> oh, man. All right. My bad, guys. Holy crap. Went down the wrong pipe. Um, I saw that, too. What not screwed over Bueller. I, uh, I watched that video. And I'm there. Pr that's pretty on par. With uh, how Whatnot does their business. Almost everything that he said, in my opinion, I I felt was very true, very real. And plus, I mean, he's got no reason to lie. And plus, when he before he came out with that video, there's a lot of other people who were making comments. Because Whatnot came out and said, oh, we don't do contracts. I don't remember who exactly said that. I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure people are posting stuff that, that Mr. Bolo was putting out saying, we don't do that. We don't do contracts. We've never done this type of stuff. We don't employ uh, these guys. But then, you know, Bueller had a contract, obviously. I think it was Two Brothers Comics. They posted something saying, no, we absolutely had a contract with them. And I can attest, too, I had a three-month contract with them last year. <clears throat> so I, I knew automatically that they absolutely do contracts. Um, So it did seem... But what they said was... It seems like to me, whatnot is very, um, they, they want everything. Like they, they're aiming for the big picture at all times. Like they're, they're aiming for home runs and grand slams, but in reality, you need those singles and doubles just as bad as you need a grand slam. And, uh, I think they just kept wanting, you know, the big hitters and it kind of came back to bite them in the ass. So I'm happy that he is moving on. I'm, I'm hoping he moves on from whatnot. Um, I hope he can, can continue doing the stuff that he's doing with the whole Bueller bus and traveling the country. I hope that you know. I hope that all pans out for him because I know that they were a major sponsor for him. So he had some cool videos seeing other shops. So I'm hoping he continues with that. Uh, Casey Rudd, Ice Cream Man comes back this week. Oh my God, Ice Cream Man's so good, man. Ice Cream Man is fire. Green on heavy metal. If you're smart, get a debt six. Uh, I don't know what that is. I'm gonna be honest with you. Oh, detailed contracts. See, that's the thing, is they uh, they seem very friendly and they're very like upfront with you. Oh, we want this. We want this. And as soon as like you sign stuff, it's almost as if like they disappear. And I'm pretty positive that's what he said as well, um, because even though mine was only three months. A uh, month into it, I I couldn't really get a hold of anybody, and all the shit that was said that was going to happen didn't really happen either. Um, so I don't want to, you know, he said she said type of stuff, but that's my personal experience with them. And once the three months were over, that was a wrap. I didn't want to continue on. I didn't want to do anything else with them. I didn't want to promote them anymore. And my shop, for example, my comic shop, they don't do any work with them either. Um, they weren't. They didn't have a contract or anything like that, but they don't sell at all on Whatnot anymore. They don't like the app. They don't like dealing with it. And that's, you know, there's a lot of people coming out with opinions. And I don't think you can just kind of throw those opinions to the side. Anyone read Savage Circus through Heavy Metal? It's so much fun, and it's getting a movie. I did not read that, but that would be uh, really cool to hear, too. See, my shops, they don't really get a lot of heavy metal. Even when I was living in Oklahoma, I never really saw uh, heavy metal popping up on the shelves. 
But this was the one that I wanted to talk about super quick from Oni, Rick and Morty. I mean, there's not really much you can say about Rick and Morty. It is what it is. But what I will talk about with it, Ideal City, what's going on, man? Hope you're doing good today. I, uh, it read just like a, an episode. Like, if you're a fan of Rick and Morty, I was pleasantly surprised with how fun this first issue was. Well, this is the second one, but um, it's like a brand new start of the ongoing series. Uh, Golden Fold was kind of the main villain in this one. It kind of had a, a Rick where there's different Golden Folds from different universes. And I like Golden Fold in the episode, so to see him be kind of the main character in this, I thought that was really cool. So I'm if, assuming my shop has this one. It's not on my pull list. I'm absolutely going to be getting that one. Ryan Longden, damn, I missed the story. I'm going to be honest, there really wasn't much to a story to it at all. Um, it was just my personal experience dealing with whatnot, and it was only a three-month contract. It wasn't anything too special uh, because it turns out they give year ones. Ugh. Man, I couldn't imagine getting into a year with them, though. But there's other guys that do it, and they seem to really be enjoying themselves, so take that for what it is. I tend to not like to talk shit on other companies when they're just trying to be a business. They're trying to you know, they're trying to grow their brand and they're trying to be something. So who am I to say that what they're doing, just because I'm not a fan of something, doesn't mean it's wrong. Uh, so, like I said, take that for what it is. See, Winner, how they keep Frankies and Unknown on their platforms beyond me. Those companies are crooks. Uh, I've bought from Frankies before, and I will say I've never had a problem. Um, I bought from them at a con, too, and I never had an issue so I can't say that. I do know people who have had a lot of problems with Unknown, though. I think, I think Unknown was a bigger conversation when I would do whatnot uh, auctions. They would pop up constantly with people complaining about them. So others have had issues. I personally have not. Uh, the Ideal City just subbed your patron. Dude, that means so much to me. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm going to reach out to you on there. Um, so I can get some of your contact information, but I know uh, I didn't bring it up. There's going to be a monthly giveaway every single month for people. Just like a, a big thank you. Uh, it's early access to all my videos. I know I only do two a week. I start doing more live stream stuff, but as soon as the video's done, um, you're going to have access to it. So there's something to also look forward to. So I appreciate all support on that level as well. So ideal city. Thank you very much. Uh, Marco Cruz. What's good. I enjoy your show, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, for everyone that is just tuning in, we haven't made it too far just yet. We were talking about uh, whatnot books, Oni Press, AWA, some other stuff like that. Uh, is there any? Oh, someone was talking about Mad Cave's Nature's Labyrinth. Someone commented on this one and said that this is a bomb ass read. I've never read it. I've never seen it at one of my LCSs. Uh, new layer introduced to the game. Our contestants, Nature's Labyrinth. See, I don't even know what the hell it's about. Um, but I'm excited for it. Uh, I also I also forgot with the Patreon, I created a Discord as well. There's only a few people who have signed up through the Patreon, so that's obviously not like the Discord's going to be live, like super talkative, but I wanted to create something for everybody to just kind of come together and, you know, talk comics. So take that for what it is. But Nature's Labyrinth, if you read this one from Mad Cave, let me know what you think about it. Uh, somebody talked about, maybe, maybe it was UKO that said something about that. Uh, so, like I said, somebody commented and was like, oh, it's awesome. You need to check it out. I was like, all right, shit. I've never, uh, I don't know anybody checking it out. Oh, hell yeah, Ideal City. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I am super new to uh, Discord, setting up Patreon type stuff. I, uh, I'm still trying to figure everything out. So like I said, please reach out if you have any issues with anything. I, uh, I want to make sure everybody has the best experience they can on it. And I want to make sure everything is, you know, set up correctly and it works. But I, uh, I'm not that good with this type of stuff. Uh, let's see. Shorts too. Ah, oh, it's been a while since I've done a short, man. I just, the problem is, is it's just so, I've, I've been so busy with a lot of stuff. The videos, I do all the editing myself. And the whole plan was to put out as much content as I possibly can for you guys. Like, I would love to do something every single day, but I don't know if that's completely doable for me. But either way, um, the lives, every Tuesday, every Friday, I can get a live stream in, and I love doing this stuff with you guys. My, every other time, it's going to be Sunday, Thursday videos. Might be able to fill some shorts in here and there, but for the most part, it's uh, going to be, at right now, probably two live streams a week, two main videos a week. I'll try to fill in, uh, I'll try to fill in some shorts as well when I can. 
Uh, let me see if I can try to catch up on some of these comments. I missed some. Manic, what's going on, bro? I hope you're doing well today. Ryan Longden, I did. I finally got one. Uh, Joshua, we'll get. We'll be getting to Marvel very shortly. Uh, let's see. What about? I saw another one. Just getting into AWA. Can you recommend some complete series in trade paperback? Ooh, Michael, hundred percent. Check out. Uh, this is the one. Year Zero. This is uh, so year zero. Uh, all right, guys, I'm going to bring this up again super quick. Uh, so this is a prequel to the other two. This is a prequel, and it's basically ev like the descent into the zombie apocalypse. The other two volumes, volumes one and volumes two, the zombie apocalypse is already established, and all you do is follow a group of people, but this one is kind of the same thing. You follow a different group of people, but it's showing the world... Um, Pretty much figuring out that there's a zombie apocalypse that's happening. Uh, so definitely recommend that. Uh, to be quite honest, you really can't go wrong. Some of the stuff I think just wrapped up. I mean, Absolution was good. Sacrament was really good. I will admit, I will admit that Trojan hasn't been that great so far. It's two issues deep. It's not bad by any means. Just okay. But take a look at some of their older stuff. I mean, they've got an entire world of superheroes that they've created. So if you're interested in like. Uh, like superheroes, like Marvel DC, they've got something called the Resistance, and there's Resistance Uprising, and there's a ton of other books too that kind of go off of that. Like um, recently, Erratic and Erratic Recharged. Uh, there's a uh, Moths was one. There's a lot of shit with just the the Resistance world. Um, let's see. I read your torn on your recommendation. It was lit, Invincible. Oh, nice. Looking forward. Oh, yeah, Marco. I'm looking forward to that one, too. Uh, Kale, okay, I can agree with that. I think the zombie series has to be done correctly. I'm also kind of over, like, apocalyptic series as well because I think they're all getting, like, super played out and none of them are really unique to each, like, unique. Um, they all seem to be, like, the same thing. Like, a survivor's just trying to live their life out in a, an apocalypse in a, waste, in a wasteland and they run into somebody or they meet somebody or just something happens. It's like... I feel like I'm reading the same thing over and over again. But unless if there's anything else that you guys want to check out with some of these indie publishers, we're going to move on. Yeah, let's move on. Let's see. Image. Do we have any Skybound this week? Uh, from what I remember, I don't think we had Skybound. Mm, no, no Skybound. All right. Image is about to have a bomb-ass week, too. Rich B, what's going on? Happy afternoon, buddy. I hope you're doing well today. Walking Dead was enough. Dude, Walking Dead is fucking awesome. I'm a huge fan of Walking Dead. Uh, let's see. This week we got Saga. We can bring it up. Uh, sadly, I'm not reading Saga. I've got the, I got the compendium right here. This is how I would recommend checking out Saga if any of you are interested in it. Uh, I, I haven't read it. Sorry. I wish I read it. I'll catch up to it eventually, though. But Saga, everybody loves Saga. Everybody talks highly of Saga. saga. <laughs> I said Saga. Let's see. Uh, are you going to check out New Superman? Mr. Negative, I am going to be checking out that New Superman. Uh, I figured that's a good time to hop on it. Junkyard Joe, absolutely. Hell yeah. Uh, CW Winter, or C Winter might be. Everybody watching The Last of Us. Oh my god, dude. The Last of Us. If you've played the game... They, like, did such a great job to the fans. Like, they've got so many just, like, one-for-one -one scenes to the video game. And this shit is just so good. This one, though. Saga lost its flow. <clears throat> Saga lost its flow by taking a break. I believe that. Uh, I mean, what was it? 50, 50 issues or 50-something issues, and they took, like, a couple years off? That's bound to happen. Damn, Dairy Bandit. Superman 1 is my most anticipated title of the year. That's saying a lot. You got a long year ahead of you. It's only February. Well, it's all actually shit. Almost March. Good Lord. Ice Cream Man, though. If you guys aren't reading Ice Cream Man, you're making a huge mistake on your end. Uh, this is the cover B, Heidersdorf. Cool covers, cool shit. Uh, where is it? Now, I didn't open it because... I have all the issues, so I just kept this one closed. They have a deluxe hardcover. It covers, uh, it doesn't say on here, but I believe it's issues 1 through 15. 
So obviously they're a little behind with issue number 34, uh, but I really, really recommend checking this one out, 100%. Let's see. Uh, Last of Us, uh, I guess if you want to call it a zombie series, I would treat it more like an infection, but I think they went more of a zombie route. Uh, it's like mushroom, like not mushroom, well, I guess mushrooms, like fungus evolved to be able to withstand human temperatures. Uh, so it's like that the zombie fungus, if you've seen that in uh, like little like i think like insects and shit where it just basically takes control of the insect that fungus evolved to take over humans uh the video game is incredible seriously incredible one of my favorite games i've ever played let's see uh i know but it's such a creative well i'm a, i am do not well where are we gonna be getting to that one too soon because I, I was gonna say image has a pretty solid week though we'll get to that very shortly because i'm excited to talk about superman as well uh, where do you buy your hardcovers, and do they have Philadelphia? Do Marco? So, uh, they do have a Philadelphia hardcover. I don't know when it came out because I, I didn't see a single human being post about it. Uh, but they do have one. I'm a little. I'll bring it up right now. I go back and forth between these two websites. I usually use organic priced books and cheap graphic novels. So here's here's my thing. So here's how I go about both of these. I think organic priced books has a uh, way better shipping. I think they're very fast with their shipping, but I like to compare prices. So here, like Philadelphia, uh, there we go. Deluxe hardcover. They got it for 35 bucks. And this is what it looks like. It covers, they usually have on here what it covers. Mm, maybe they, wow, well, maybe they don't this time. They usually do. All right, so it doesn't have what they cover on it. But then I'll usually go to here as well, and I will, uh, so like this one, so $28 compared to $35. So take that for what it is, and it says on here the whole description. So it covers issues 1 through 12 and chapters 1 through 5 of A Terrifying Werewolf. Oh, what? Oh, that's a must buy. They got a, they got a chapters 1 through 5 tie-in for werewolves. Yeah, that's a must-buy. All right, so take that for what it is. Those are the two websites that I use, and for this one, Cheap Graphic Novels has it for a little bit cheaper. Uh, Specs is going to be awesome. Specs is a great series. Uh, I don't know how you say his name. I think it's David... Is it Boer? Uh, I've messaged him, I think, every time I've read <laughs> the issue, and I'm like, dude, it's another great one. You keep that shit going, man. Junkyard Joe, this is another one. If you read Geiger... Like, you got to read Junkyard Joe. This shit is too good, too. Some different covers. What does this one look like? I usually just go for cover A. Uh, but at this point in time, I'm not super picky about things. I just kind of take what I can get from my shop at this point. But definitely got to check out Junkyard Joe. That shit is just shit's fire. It's uh, I it's it's like so. Here, let me bring it up again. We're going to talk about it for a second. Because I think, I think I saw a lot of other people talking about Junkyard Joe in the... Uh, in uh, the chat as well. And speaking of, everybody in here right now, what's going on, man? Uh, everybody, I hope you guys are all having, like, the best night ever. I hope you guys had an awesome weekend. Uh, I love talking these comics with you guys, and we got some absolute bangers coming out this week. Uh, however, cheap graphic novel charges for shipping where OBP doesn't, uh, depending on what shipping you choose. That, you are correct. Um, you are right on that one. And the other thing I've noticed with cheap graphic novels is they seem to take their sweet time getting your order out when organic price books is guaranteed for like a day or two. Uh, it's available on in stock trades. In, all right, so in stock trades is probably my third choice. I go back and forth between cheap graphic novels and organic price books, and then I use in stock trades as uh, not my like my fallback, but I've had some rough experiences with in stock trades. Pretty much getting the orders out on time. Like sometimes it's taken over a month to get an order from them. And I mean, I'm not always, I'm not really picky about that. It is what it is. It shows up when it shows up. But I mean, that's kind of a long time. But Junkyard Joe, the series started off with like this guy right here, uh, right in the center. Uh, he's like a robot that was in, I think it was Vietnam. And he saved every, he saved like the whole platoon. Nobody knew who he was. It turned out it was a robot. And our main character in the book, nobody, nobody believed him that this robot Junkyard Joe existed. 
And after the first issue, you know, it's obviously, he obviously exists. So now there's a whole story behind this Junkyard Joe. Dude, it is so damn good. I love it. And, it's, and plus, it's written by Jeff Johns. Like, you can't go wrong with Jeff Johns. And everybody that's mentioning Geiger, too. Geiger Universe is going to be huge. I just know it. Slosh Berries, facts. The, the entire just Geiger Universe, everything that he's creating there, he could just keep going on with that shit. It is all so good. Uh, speaking of Philadelphia, we got a Philadelphia issue coming out this week. I want to hit on Black Cloak super quick. I Not really anything special about it. The first issue was an oversized issue. Uh, it's kind of like a mystery, but at the same time, uh, I I didn't think it was that good. I'm going to be real with you guys. Uh, for being an oversized issue, and I think it only had like an extra dollar or two price tag. Like it wasn't anything that crazy. Um, the artwork was okay. And for an oversized issue, it was almost as if they didn't really accomplish anything. Like they just didn't do shit with the story. So I'm probably not going to continue on with Black Cloak, especially because it's such a fucking huge week coming up. Uh, Philadelphia, we were just we were just showing off the uh, the hardcover. You got to get into Philadelphia, and if you're reading Nita Haw's Nightmare blog, that one is now um, that one is now kind of tying in with Philadelphia. The way that the last issue ended, Nita, the main character, was like, "All right, we got to go," and it kind of ended with them showing Philadelphia. So it's finally going to tie in with it with each other. And if you're interested in black and white books, if you really like The Walking Dead shit like that, they do have a noir edition for this as well. I ended up picking up a noir edition on accident uh, quite a while ago. I think it was the first time they did a noir edition. And I was pleasantly surprised with how much I liked it. I think the artist changed up. I'm not 100%, but I don't think the artist is the same. And I like the new art, and I think a black and white style with the newer art would look better than the older style art. Because I, shit, was it Simmons who did the art a while ago? But I just think the black and white blended too much with it. Any thoughts on specking ASM20 Balzuda variant? Uh, Gorgeous George. I don't know. Let's, uh, we're going to make it to, actually, we'll keep that thought. We're going to, uh, we'll check out ASM when we get to Marvel. We'll power through some of these other indies real quick. And I know a lot of people have been looking forward to DC as well this week. Radiant Pink. Meh. Probably my least favorite Radiant series so far. It's not it's not what it was like with the other ones. Yeah, the world's worst love story. They couldn't have fucking summed that up any better than the world's worst lo love story. That is literally... I was going to say it's like a love story that I just don't care about. I want to see the Radiance. I want to see some fighting. I want to see some action. I want to see this Radiant Pink character's kind of origin story. And I don't care about a love story. I I like what they did with uh, the Radiant Red. We got, I th what was her name? Shit, I don't even remember her name. I was going to say Hitomi, but I know Hitomi was, that's another image series that just wrapped up. Whatever her name was, they they showed her family and everything like that. But it's they still went into like a main story. This has just been like a love story between these two characters, and it's one of those things. Local man's a brand new one. I just saw uh, Henny's yellow Henny yells talk about this one. Let's see series premiere. Stray Dogs creator. Ooh, once the star recruited the media sensation super team third gen Jack Xavier had it all, but when the controversy sends Cross Jack crawling back to his mom and dad's basement in the Midwest, Jack struggles to fit into a world he left far behind, and then the bodies start piling up. I mean, my shop has it. I'm going to get it 100%. Uh, there's like, I usually will never not check out a brand new image title. They just, every time a new image series comes out, it's it's always worth it. Uh, do you have a promo code for your site so I can support the channel? Ah, oh, Marco, man, I appreciate that. I do have one on organic priced books. Uh, it should be in the description, I think. It should be. Uh, it's not in the description for this video. I've got one in. It's only, It's like two bucks off. Um, to be honest, if you just go onto the website, I'm sure there's a promo code for two dollars off. It's uh, I. I appreciate the support, but I, I don't think I get anything out of it. It's just a couple bucks off for you guys. Um, but like I said, here, I'm sure if you pop up, if you go onto organic right now, something will pop up for a couple dollars off. 
Like they always have some. They always have something going on. Hmm. Maybe because I was just on. Oh yeah, get five percent off. Five percent off your first order. I don't know if that's that would be the same as like two bucks, but uh, worst case, just check out one of my other videos. Just head into the comment section, and I think it's like AR Comics twenty or AR Comics. But like I said, off the top of my head, I'm not 100% sure. But I appreciate it. Uh, Image is having a big month. Image definitely is. I've been enjoying Earth Divers. Uh, I don't I don't pick up a lot of IDW either. But I've read a few really good ones from IDW lately. And I started to make me think, like, have I been missing out this whole time? But Earth Divers looked good. I saw Demarius. K-Bar, what's going on, buddy? Uh, we're still on Image, so we got some time. I saw someone mention Lovesick. Lovesick is... I read the first issue. I don't... I don't know how I feel about it. I... I don't know. I didn't really like it, but I didn't not like it either. It was like... Uh, what's the one? Red Room. It was like Red Room from Fantagraphics books, except this one was more of... Uh, it's not... It. I don't think it was nearly as gruesome as Red Room. Red Room was... Yeah, that, was, that was fucking gruesome. That was definitely not meant for uh, the average person. All right. But yeah, lovesick. Uh, I might have to continue on with it, though. I saw someone else. I saw someone else talk about it. I was like, oh, it's actually a pretty good series. And I was like, all right. Infernal Girl Red. This was a good first issue. I think it's only a three issue series. Uh, yeah, part two of three. So that kind of that kind of sucks. But the first one was good. I don't know if this is going to be... Uh, yeah, it's, so it's going to be another oversized issue. So that's cool, at least. Uh, okay, I love sick, too slashy. Red Room is excellent. See, Red Room is excellent. Um, and it's it's weird because I really enjoyed it, despite it being, like, very... It's a torture. It's literally a torture book. It's called Red Room. Very gruesome, very graphic, a lot of torture, a lot of crazy shit going on. But it was good. And it was weird that it was really good to me. But Lovesick, Lovesick felt kind of on just like a toned down level with a story that I didn't like as much. So. Plush is pretty cool. Perfect. We're going to be talking about that one next. Uh, but my shop has a hard time getting the issues. Of all the series, I'm really, you know, I'm knocking on wood right now. Uh, I luckily have been able to get all of the issues so far. But Plush has been very cool. These covers are cool too. We got a Fleeks cover. Fleeks did all of the, um, what was it? Stray Dogs. Fleeks did all of the Stray Dogs ones, and then we've also got Corona and Stern. Yeah, this is a, this is a really cool series. It's cannibalistic furries, so definitely check that. Like here, yeah, it says it literally in the description. Uh, what was in the air is Devin finds himself a guest at the mansion filled with cannibalistic furry horrors. That's probably the best way to describe it. Truth and faith plush is twisted. It's cool, though, because it's got, like, a, a, a cartoonish vibe to it. Like, the interior artwork looks just like this. Uh, actually, it looks more like the main cover, but it's colorful. It's just like that, uh, but it's it's very it's very cool. But if you haven't read, what's it called? We got vinyl and uh, vinyl and there's another one that they did, but they're kind of all similar to each other. Magic Order, uh, Undiscovered Country. This series has been oh so cool. Plush looks interesting, but I'm probably gonna trade with oh K Bar. That's to me. That's probably the best way to do it. I think it's only gonna be five issues. Red Room, but more. Yeah, that makes sense. That's that's the vibe I got from it after that first issue. If I can recall, this main character is just like laying in bed with a dead body at the end of the first <clears throat> at the end of the first issue, and I thought that was weird. All right, but then uh, we got Undiscovered Country up next. <clears throat> Let's see. Issue number 23. This has got to be the end of the arc. Part five. As the truth and the new America, <clears throat> as the truth of the new American future is revealed, Charlotte and Valentina realize that the order, blah, 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 blah. Uh, this arc probably has been my least favorite arc. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, I really like the series. I do. I think the series is fantastic. Uh, but this arc just has been, I don't know, kind of all over the place. I don't think it's been as good. 
But still, overall, definitely get the trade paperbacks for this one. It's it's worth it. But for me, that's everything from uh, Image. If you guys are reading this series, uh, 20th Century Men, this is the final one of this, the mini series. Extra, special extra length issues, so be on the lookout for that. I heard this is really good. Who's reading this series? Who's reading 20th Century Men? I know there's got to be a few people in this one right now. I've heard really good. I have to sleep at night, no sleeping with... <laughs> I don't blame you on that one. Yeah, but I heard this one's really good. But that is Image. Uh, Moral Sergeant looks like some Dirty Harry action. Uh, yeah, that's, that's how I... Actually, I'll bring that up for you. That's how I felt about this one. Uh, I, I didn't pick up the first issue. I kind of panned through it, and I didn't think it looked... It wasn't anything too special as far as the artwork goes. And I think when the first issue came out, it was a it was a long issue for me, and I, or a, it was a big week for me, and I was like, nah, I'm just going to skip out on it. I didn't really hear anybody talk about it. I didn't watch Pop Culture Philosopher's review, and I know he reviews, like, everything. If you guys, like, I know I do my top ten list. Plastic, that's the other one, Demarius. Oh, man, thank you for that. So they got vinyl, plastic, and plush. That's like the three. There might be another series, but I know those are like the big ones that they do. Uh, but like I said, I didn't watch uh, Pop Culture Philosophers. Robbie, I didn't watch his reviews. He does he does great reviews. He I don't know how the why, if you guys watch one of his videos, I don't know how the fuck he does it. Uh, he it's it's like he he stands there and he just goes through every single book, and I don't think he cuts anything. And the dude just. He's uh he's really good. I like listening to his reviews. I think he has good opinions on all of his uh on all of his books. I think we're pretty on par with what we like. Uh, one of these one of these weeks, I'll get. I'm sure he won't give a shit. But uh, one of these one of these Friday night where we just go over everything, I'll we can put on some of his videos, because he's got like I said, he's got some good shit with reviews. Let's see. Boom Studios. Oh, Boom's got a pretty good week. Oh, they do. Damn, Boom's got a good week. Holy shit. Something's killing the children. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers. Once Upon a Time at the End of the World. And Specs. Not to uh, hate on the other two books, but I don't like Damn Them All and not reading Doom. Uh, let's see. I like Robbie's overview. Yeah, dude. He, he does a good job. He really does. Is it? It is pretty grade school level. Uh, George for, oh yeah, for the Sergeant series. It, it seemed very simple, and that's not to take away from a good book. Um, it just didn't seem like something I was interested in spending money on, if that makes sense. But something is killing children. 29 issues deep. Uh, the only way to read this is either hardcovers or trade paperbacks at this point. I I want to say this is the end of the arc. I I don't know. If it is for a fact, it's the final hour for Erica. She has no choice left. Um, but the way it was set up, it kind of seems like it's going to be the end of the arc. And there's been so much crazy shit going on in this series. I just started watching Comic Pals. I'm going to check them out. I've never heard I never heard of them. Uh, that doesn't mean much coming, <clears throat> coming from me, though. I don't watch a ton of uh, YouTube videos. I like Robbie also, but multiple opinions are good. Ah, oh, man, Michael, I appreciate that. I, I agree. It's always good to have different opinions. You can't just, you know, there's there's so many people out there. There's other people who uh, make videos as well. And I want to say that I think I'm more, I don't call it negative, but I think I'm more critical on the books that I read. Um, like, I'll talk about stuff where it's like, I didn't like this, and I thought this was stupid, and for this reason, I didn't like it. And I think people were talking about, a, a lot of people comment sometimes, they're like, dude, like, you're so negative, or... Um, you don't like a lot of books. And it's not like I go into these books like thinking, oh, I hope I don't like this one or I know this is going to be another stinker. No, it's I, I want to like this. But when you're spending your hard-earned money, whether it's, was it like this one's four bucks, this one's four bucks, and there's a lot of new Marvel ones that are like five or six dollars, and you're getting a book with a subpar plot, the artwork is okay, and then there's multiple things in there that don't exactly make sense to the story or because it's some random ass Marvel series, it's not canon and it doesn't flow with maybe that character's ongoing series. It's like, no, I, I should have my own negative opinion on that. I shouldn't like something because it's made by a certain creator 
or because it's their work that I should just, you know, oh, I should appreciate their work. And I do appreciate it. Like, I couldn't write a comic to save my life. I can't draw for shit. But that doesn't mean that I can't give you my real honest opinion on whether it's a shit book or a good book. I hope people would do the same thing to me. Like, oh, it's like, you know, maybe I make a video or I do something. And I'm like, oh, dude, your video sucks. Well, tell me why. It's, tell me why you don't like it. And uh, everyone's entitled to an opinion. And there's too many people out there that I've watched that just constantly, they rattle off fucking all 15, 20 books that they read. And it's like, this one was great. This one's awesome. This one's fantastic. No, it's not. You already know that shit ain't good. I don't know why the hell you want to say every single book is good. But tell it as it is. Say the artwork sucks. Tell them the, the writing's fucking garbage. Uh, I used to get that crap all the time when I was talking about Donnie Cates' books. I, it's, he's all right. He's just okay. I don't want to hate on the guy, but, you know, his writing's just not for me. I'm waiting for a second slipcase. Ooh, Jeff Martin, I agree with that. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, man, I missed a couple of these comments. Uh, Dairy Banda, I wonder how long the series is going to last. It went from zero to 60 in one hour. Dude, that's true. Dude, something is killing children. They can, uh, you just said it could go on for years. It really could go on for a long time because there's so many characters and there's just so many different ways that they could go about this. They could, they could do 50 issues and literally retire Erica and pick up with maybe Gabby and do maybe 20 or 30 issues with Gabby or some shit like that. They could do this for a very long time. Uh, but James Tynion, uh, he's a phenomenal writer, but I will say that Nice House in the Lake was, it, I don't know, it didn't really end that well. Uh, Michael Lorano, you are realistic. I, I, that's what I like to think, not negative. Some people don't want to say anything negative. Unfortunately, sometimes it just isn't good. And that's That's how I feel about it. Like, if I'm going to read five Marvel books in a week, and like, uh, not... Not this week, but next week, there's another new Iron Man series coming out. I can only imagine the Iron Man series that just wrapped up by Christopher uh, Cantwell. I heard that wasn't that good. I'm reading the current Iron Man series. I think it's pretty decent. Um, I wouldn't. I think it's a good sleeper series for Marvel. But there's another Iron Man series coming out called I Am Iron Man. Do we really need another Iron Man series? That's like fucking having the 15 Spider-Man series that we currently have. Do we really need that? We don't. Uh, Marco, you're not hard on the books. Comic Elite is a good example of a hater. You speak your opinions. See, that's I, I like to go into um, my reviews and the things that I say. I want to be able to back up what I have to say. Like, I don't want to go into it with, like, this series sucks. Well, then everyone's going to be watching it. Like, why? Why does it suck? Well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to tell you straight up. I don't like it for this reason. I don't think this makes sense as far as a character goes. I think based on this last issue, this specific issue sucked because they didn't continue on with it. And I don't think they did this. I like to support my reasons behind things. I don't, I'm not going into it like shit's great. This shit's so good. No, I, you got to have a follow up, man. You got to have this stuff. And there's a lot of people who don't do that. Oh, man, dude, that's so cool. I'm seeing a lot of good stuff about the new Iron Man series. I'm telling you guys, we got some people in the house right now. That was, in my opinion, that is definitely a sleeper series for Marvel. If I had if I had the first issue sitting here with me, I'd show you some of the artwork. But uh, it's like a mystery. It's It started off with like, all right, here we go. Tony Stark is being himself where he's sad and everyone's still hating him and shit like that. But it turned into a mystery because there's actually somebody that's trying to pose as Tony Stark. And they've also, they're also using Stark tech and some advanced technology that he can't figure out. Uh, so it's it's really cool. Uh, so much better than I thought. Uh, KO, I'm not going to be getting I Am Iron Man either, sadly. Uh, I'm, I'm good for one Iron Man series. I'm not going to be pushing my luck with the second one. Comics are also super subjective. One man's garbage is another man's favorite. K-Bar, you hit the nail on the head. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody. There's, that's why there's fucking, what, 100 and almost damn near 200 comics coming out this week. There's something for everybody. Not everybody's buying 200 comics, but people are going to buy their specific thing. And that's why this is such a cool hobby. And I love everybody's opinion on this shit. Comics Elite. So Comics Elite, fair in their reviews. They make good points disagreeing with their titles. Is con Comics Elite, are they are they the ones that uh, like do all the exclusives and shit? Like that Comics Elite? I didn't know if they have their own, like, I don't know, own review channel or shit like that. Uh, but maybe I'll have to check them out too, assuming they're different. 
Uh, but another one, I mean, I'm not going to be hitting on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, TMNT. You like Power Rangers? You like TMNT? They throw them together. They team up. I mean, <laughs> if you like them, what more could you ask for? Shit's so cool. Artwork's great. Story. I mean, it's not like the story's spectacular, but it's fighting and you got Power Rangers and Turtles. Shit's awesome. Now, these next two, though. These next two. One Spot of Time at the End of the World. Way better than I thought it was going to be as well. This one, this is what I was talking about earlier. I'm kind of over these apocalyptic series. Like, there, there's nothing special about any of them. But there's something about this one, which is funny because this one still follows exactly, like, the apocalyptic plotline guide that I was talking about where it's like, all right, you've got this main character. He or she's alone and something happens or they meet someone and now they're off on a new journey and they're running away from somebody or somebody is after them. That's literally exactly what this series is like to a T except the uh, just the dialogue between these two characters and just the relationship that they're growing uh, Mezzi and do they say the other one's name? I know it's Mezzi and Maceo. Like you see them grow like Ma Mezzi. I think it was Mezzi hated Maceo when she first met him. And now all of a sudden it's like, all right, he's starting to grow on me. He's this. And it's, it's really nice to see them just grow after the first couple of issues. So I recommend this series, definitely. Uh, let's see. Specs. Specs is fucking awesome. Uh, new FF slow burn, still enjoyable. I I didn't start it. I was going to pick up the first issue, and I, I looked through it, and I was like, this first issue for a brand new ongoing is like a one-shot kind of issue with the thing. And one of the, one of the guys in my shop was like, this shit's terrible. Um, it's a really bad first issue. He's pretty critical. I mean, he's down, he's a little bit on the older side, so he's been around for a long time reading comic books. So he doesn't really like modern comics. Totally get it. It is what it is. Um, but I still take his opinion pretty strongly because I think he's pretty on he's on point with a lot of books. I heard it did get better, but at the same time, I heard it's still not that great. Uh, let's see. That's why I watch five different review shows, but ARs. Oh, man, I appreciate that. Comics Elite review Wednesday, comics on Monday. Okay. I'll have to check them out, too. Uh, I don't know if I missed it. Is is it the Comics Elite, though, that makes all the exclusive covers? Like, is it them? Uh, is there something unique about the story? Uh, Joseph L., there, if you're talking about Once Upon a Time at the End of the World or Specs, uh, Specs is just so damn cool. So what it basically is, is you've got these two main characters, probably them right there, and you've got these glasses. And it's like one of those like stupid ads at the back in the back of a comic book. Um, it's like at the the end, like at the, basically at the end of the comic book or in the middle. It's like buy these sunglasses, like X-ray vision sunglasses, or like you know some dumb shit like that. And uh, what happens is, is I don't think they even order it, but it magically shows up and they make wishes from wearing the sunglasses. But it's one of those kind of monkey paw sunglasses, like monkey paw wishes where you got to be careful with what you wish for because you could wish for something basic. Like, uh, for example, from 8 Billion Genies, if you're reading that series in the last issue where the one girl said, like, I feel so bad. All I wished was I wish I was one with the one with the sea or one with the ocean. And she literally became part of the ocean with like a bunch of the, the animal, like the sea creatures and shit. Um, so it's like one of those situations, like they're making wishes and it's not what they want it to be. So it was a uh, really cool. And David Boer, uh, every time I talk to him, he's like, he's really proud of this series as well. So definitely props to him. I support him when I can. And uh, definitely I would check the series out. Now I saw someone mention, is it going to be a four issue or is this the last issue? That I don't know, but I can figure that out real easy. Specs. Oh no, this is the end of the series. That that's a that's a fucking bummer. That's an absolute bummer. That's a good series. About to message him again and be like, man, you really did that? You really just made it a four issue? That's it? You had like such a bomb idea. This is like eight billion genies. Eight billion genies is eight issues, but that definitely needed to be ongoing. This this would have benefited from like 10 issues, I think. But that definitely sucks. And the covers are so cool too. Oh man. Oh, I'm so pumped for that. 
Uh, yeah, Henny, definitely grab the trade paperback for it. Uh, Glenn Smith, yes, they're the same. Comics Elite, no kidding, and are very negative and biased in their reviews. Well, I'll have to check. I'll have to check them out. Oh, that's crazy though. So they make tons of exclusive covers, and then on top of that, they do they put out videos. I didn't even know they had a channel, but that's cool. Uh, and some said I'm not gonna argue. I don't even know where that one came from, but yeah, this is this is a fun thing, guys. You don't need to you don't need to argue over comic books. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm starting to see that. Yeah, yeah, guys, just uh, whatever it is, it's it's not a big deal. We're we're talking comics. We're having a good time. Oh, I'm grateful, dude. Boomer on Canto. Canto, people, people have slept on Canto for so goddamn long until whatnot just like exploded it. And this is why I have a hard time like talking shit on whatnot because while it's not exactly for me and I don't really like all the exclusives and all that crap, um, they brought. They brought basically Kanto back to life. They made it super popular when it was just a very, uh, I don't want to call it like it wasn't popular, but I mean, it was very specific with what people liked it. Cause it was definitely, people always refer to it as like a kid's comic. And I don't, I don't really see it as a kid's comic. I see Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur, the new series, like a kid's comic. Um, but Kanto was a lot of fun. I think they're what up to four volumes now. It's, uh, they got the, the first volume, like, something lion lion something shit yeah dude canto i don't even know anymore they, they they're definitely up to i think four volumes uh let's see would have known about it if you didn't didn't recommend it. oh man that's awesome man i'm glad you guys uh specs could have a second volume that they probably could uh i would not put it past them i do like when they do shit like that though where they're like all right guys turns out you actually loved it and we're bringing it back for more Let's see. Comics Elite, Economics and Comics. Oh, Dave's. I've tuned in the Economics and Comics before. He's another one. Uh, I don't catch his shit to be... I don't catch his stuff all the time, to be honest with you. Uh, but I like a lot of his opinions. He seems like a really nice guy. Um, and the stuff... The, the way he talks about books... I, I forget if he owns a comic shop or he's a manager of a comic shop. Um, but I like the things he has to say about just like... I don't know. He... he does his best to promote a lot of positive stuff from what i've seen but i i will say i haven't watched a shitload of his stuff i will put it that way but he, from what i've seen he seems like a really nice guy uh demarius yeah we can go back to we can go back to something that's killing children uh because that that would have been it for boom studios um uh, but like i said something's killing children i think this is the end of the arc i'm not uh a hundred percent and kale yeah that's i've noticed that too which is why i probably don't tune into a ton of his shit because mainly I don't watch a lot of speculation and investment videos uh, because inv even in, as in, as far as investment videos go, um, like what the hell is his name? Swaggle, Swaggle Haas. His shit's really good. Bry's comics. I haven't watched him in a little while, but I liked his videos. Um, there's another one. Uh, what the hell? I think it's literally just comic investments. I think he's pretty good when it comes to that stuff. So that's who I, always refer people to if they're always like hey you know what's your thoughts on this speculation i'm like ah i can give you an opinion but that's not really my forte that's not like what i usually do um so i usually refer brys and swaggle or swaggle they seem uh like good people as well i've talked to swaggle a few times damn is this swaggle or swaggle <laughs> shit no, i don't know uh but something's killing children top-notch series it the shit's fire Let's head on over to Dark Horse. They're having surprisingly a pretty solid week. I'm not getting... Oh, oh, this is the big one from them. This this one low-key might be the one that I'm looking forward to most this week. The Blue Book number one. Uh, let's check out some of these. Oh, he owns... All right, Demarius. I appreciate that. Nice house in the lake. I heard last issue was scrambled. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised um, if they did that. Last issue was scrambled to allow for a sequel series because of how unexpectedly popular it was. It was. It was a crazy good series. Which, but at the same time, the thing that really bothers me about that series is that it. The, I guess the way I'm gonna, the way I'm putting this is every single like every single issue was extremely good. As far as a collective series goes, I don't think it was that good. Um, I enjoyed every single one of the issues, and I was like, all right. So this is another really good issue, but what is it leading to? Because every issue is the same damn thing. It focused on a particular character, their relationship with Walter, 
and how they ended up in the house. And then it went to the present time and what they're doing in the house. And Kale, yes, this is also tiny. And, and I was like, this is so good. And all of a sudden it's like, all right, well, this issue is the same thing as the last one. It's a good issue. I really like it. But what are we leading to at this point? What's going on? And then it wrapped up and I was like, dude, that is a fucking letdown. This is a bummer ass last issue. It just, it just wasn't good. And, but it's like, oh, we've read, we're, we're leading into another volume. But I, I'm, I mean, I say this now that I'm, I might not continue on with it. I'm probably going to continue on with it, but those 10 or 12 issues, whatever they were, they didn't really do a good job making me want to read the next one outside of trade paperback form. I don't know. Uh, you should do a live show on the comic review channels. Uh, I will, I will, I've actually debated. So the Friday night stream, I've been debating on doing it kind of like, uh, discussions with that shit too. Like putting on some other people's videos, like, um, I don't know, like, for example, like if I put on like a swaggle video, some of his like investments or some things that he's specking on, I just want to, I just want to reach out and get, you know, their permission. I can't imagine they would say no, especially if I link all their stuff, but, uh, it would be a lot of fun to just kind of have a, a live discussion of the things that they're talking about. I've wanted to do that for a bit. So going forward, I might be doing that as well. Economics. That's pretty funny. Uh, it's two stories in the blue book. The cover represents how the inside of the first book story. Uh, it's going to be really cool. So obviously it's by Tinyan. Uh, debut issue, Tinyan presents what he calls his true weird stories. Tales of ordinary people encountering the strange and the impossible. That is is going to be so cool. I am, I hope I'm not hyping this up for myself. I'm, I, I'm hope we're, I hope we're all not hyping it up for ourselves, but I'm really excited for it. I think some of my favorite, my favorite issue that tiny and did was in the department of truth. And I know that series has been a little hit or miss on some people. Um, but they, uh, that one issue where it was a single issue, but he was dealing with aliens Oh my God, chat, you you already know. If you read that series and you read that issue, you already know that's probably the best one of the series. That one was so good and it was so creepy. And then the way that they wrapped it up, they could have they could have kept making alien issues. I don't give a shit about the main story at that point. I was I was like, I'm this is so good. Here's some other sweet covers. Uh, I know we got foils, boss. This is boss logic, is that who that is? Looks pretty cool. Uh, full, one of these is a foil. I thought it was. Oh yeah, Oming foil. So you can get you can get cover A as a foil. So that's pretty cool too. Uh, K bar. That one's an absolute banger, dude. That one was so good. Uh, I don't get a lot of foils, but I'll tell you what. If I see this one at my shop for a foil, might have to do it. We don't have too many good alien series on the market right now. I mean, we have an alien series from Marvel, but I mean like UFO creepy alien stories. We don't really have any of that, uh, but that's all I'm gonna. That's all I'm getting from Dark Horse Star Wars fans. We got a new High Republic adventure series. I've read some of the Star Wars adventure stuff. It really they always just like struck me as a kid series in my opinion. Like nothing really too special about it. Uh, so take that for what it is. If you're a Witcher fan, Witcher. But other than that, nothing too crazy. No, no other new series. But the blue book, folks, that's going to be the one. That's going to be the big the big baddie of the week. Uh, IDW, I think IDW's got a good one this week, too. Dead Seas! Oh, was, and uh, I, was it K.O.? K.O. was talking about Earth Divers earlier. I don't recall off the top of my head. I think it was K.O. that was talking about it. Oh, and the Ross villains. Dude, the timeless covers are so fucking cool. So is this one. Time Stop Thinking, Come Throw, it's... Christopher Columbus ships are weeks closer to landfall, blah, 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 blah. Huh. I don't, yeah, I didn't know anybody reading this series. I never, I mean, I heard of it and the covers look cool. Uh, this is, this is going to sound really goofy. Uh, but every time I see an IDW series that has like that in the bottom corner, like the IDW original, I feel like that's my new indicator that it's going to be a banger. Because every IDW series that I've read that has that in the little corner, I'm like, whoa, this is really good stuff here. So I don't know if that's just like, I mean, because, well, well, shit, this one doesn't. <laughs> so I guess take that back. But Dead Seas is really cool, too. I'm, I'm really enjoying this one as well. It's like a ghost. It's like a ghost ship stories. 
or ghost ship story. So what it is is, uh, so I think it was the Day of the Dead. All the ghosts came back to life, and they never went away. And they're just like causing havoc on the public and shit like that. But they've captured a lot of ghosts on a ship, and they send prisoners out there for a reduced sentence to clean up the ectoplasm because they can use that for health benefits, and it sells for an absurd amount of money. And the ghosts got out. That's what this series is. And there's a lot of other stuff going on it too. And it's really cool. Uh, like I said, really caught me off guard. Uh, next up, I think Dynamite's having a pretty solid week. Yeah, so if you guys are fans of Gargoyles and Darkwing Duck, obviously you got to check these out. I read the first issue of Gargoyles. I did like it. Um, it's one of those things... Like, I'm not gonna, it's not that I don't like it, it's that it's not exactly what I go for in a comic book, but it was really good, I will say that much. They've got some really cool covers, I mean, Dynamite always has a shitload of covers, and they're usually all really cool. Uh, let's see, what's this one? Hazer, dude, Ken Hazer's got some awesome artwork as well, I always appreciate Ken Hazer's work. Lucio Perillo, they always got a sweet Perillo cover. Yeah, so, like, I mean, like I said, you like Gargoyles. If you grew up with Gargoyles, and this is something that you think you'd be into, definitely pick it up. The first issue was solid. It's just not my thing for uh, comic books. Just like Darkwing Duck, the first issue was awesome. I The first issue was so much fun. It, was exactly, it read exactly like an episode would, uh, but same thing. I'm probably not going to continue on with it. But the Gargoyles DVD is better than the comics. Uh, are they coming out with another season of Gargoyles too? I feel like I saw something about that, but I could be, I could be wrong. Hmm, I don't remember off the top of my head. Back issue diving myself this week from Grateful Dog. Only pulling one issue this week. Yeesh. Uh, Gorgeous George said it best. That is ridiculous self control. That is, <laughs> that is very good self control. This is a big ass week. Ah, oh, Demarius, is that true? The foil is the only is only on the lettering for the top of the book. Ah, uh, that's kind of a waste. It still might be cool to see in person, but it might be a waste. Darkwing Duck, Quacker Jack's gonna be in this one. Cool covers again. Who did this one? Edgar. Yeah, always cool covers. Good stuff. But like I was just saying before, um, if you if you grew up with Darkwing Duck. It to me, I think they did. Um, I think uh, Amanda, how you say that, Dibert. I think Amanda Dibert really did a service to all the fans that grew up with it. And uh, when I was doing the live stream with the experience on Wednesday, uh, they were talking about that Amanda. She was talking about having to go to work, and it was to sit down and watch Darkwing Duck, like all of the seasons on uh, Disney Plus. So she's basically t watched the entire show. And now she's doing that too. So it's like, that's that's really cool. Uh, SMK, 90s kid. Absolutely, baby. 92. It's born in 92. I feel like that is the best time to have ever been a kid. And I know I'm saying that because I'm biased. Because uh, that was the only time I was a kid. But man, we had Power Rangers, Pokemon, Turtles. We had all the good shit in the 90s, man. Oh, so much fun stuff. And then brand new series, uh, Vampirella Strikes 10, if you're into Vampirella. But Draculina's also got a brand new series this week. Obviously, a lot of these covers as well. Oh, I love I love these, though. The Ultraviolets. I'm a big fan of the Ultraviolet covers from Dynamite. But that's it. I'm probably not going to be grabbing any of them. Uh, and DC, let's get it going, folks. All right, let's, let's catch up on some of these comics. I've got a heavy week, and it's going to heavy... Oh, my God. Yeah, Henny, I've got a heavy week coming, too. Gargoyles have toys releasing from NECA. So, that's... Usually, that's always a sign, in my opinion. If, uh... That's always a sign to me. If some if somebody's releasing toys... I, I do the same shit with Marvel when they release toys. If... If they put a character out, that means that character is going to be in something. So, if NECA's putting out Gargoyles, maybe they're capitalizing on the new comic book series. But, to me... That probably indicates that Disney's going to be doing something, especially if Disney wanted to reprise the series with Dynamite. They're probably getting people hype again for it. They're going to be doing something. Foil hat variant. Dude, I, uh, I'm i telling you, I always talk about having a tinfoil hat on. I am I always am into conspiracies and aliens and that crazy shit. 
Uh, so I always talk about having a tinfoil hat. Uh, when I do the streams on Wednesday, we were talking about that. They always say, uh, the one dude, Rex, he's always like, AR, you're going to have to show up with a tinfoil hat one day. And I, I am going to make a tinfoil hat for one of those shows. DuckTales, dude, DuckTales is so good too, man. Oh my God, DuckTales. I, I like DuckTales more though. I like uh, DuckTales more than Darkwing Duck. Ice Cream Man 33 from eBay today, so I'll be all caught up. I think I'm one issue behind. I, I got to double check. I'm pretty sure I have them all, but I ended up getting it later. Uh, also got the finder today. I don't know that one. Holy shit, Ryan. I just cut 46 titles from my pull list. Still have still have 112. Holy crap, dude. Dude, I respect that, though. I respect that. That's awesome that you've got that many books that do. You, here's the kicker, though. Do you read them? If you read them all, that's awesome. But if you buy like a lot of covers, then it is what it is. But as long as you're reading those books too, uh, then then I can you know kind of back you up on that. I'm the star nostalgic for Darkwing and Gargoyles. Grew up with them. Uh, I I feel you on that. I bought that. Like I said, I bought the first issues because I grew up with it, and I was like, I need this. Um, but after reading it, I agreed that it was very cool. But as far as the comic book goes, I mean, we just got done talking about something that's killing the children, Ice Cream Man, uh, the blue the blue one, I think that's what it's called. And that's just, like, what I'm interested in. Superhero stuff, everyone always asks, like, oh, it's like, hey, are, you know, you don't read a lot of DC. Um, are you not interested in DC? Like, what's the deal with that? And I just, it's it's the super, it's just more of a superhero thing. I grew up with Marvel, so that's why I love Marvel. Um, that's just, like, like I said, I grew up with it. Spider-Man, Venom, fucking Daredevil, all those guys. I grew up with it. I didn't grow up as a DC kid. I still loved Batman growing up. Um, but as time went on, I never really read Batman comics. I didn't read Superman comics. I always picked up Spider-Man. I always picked up those ones. And as then, you know, when I came back in the comics, it was basically the same thing. Um, so now I have been reading more DC which is funny because it's actually been more of DC events that I've been reading. Like this Batman One Bad Day, Clayface, this isn't an event obviously, but uh, these are all one shots, but they've been extremely good. Deceased, I'm not reading this series. I've been collecting them all in hardcovers, but also extremely good. Uh, I just picked up another DC hardcover. I've been reading a lot of DC hardcovers. Uh, I've in the process of finishing Kingdom Come, we were talking about that last Friday stream. I'm in the process of finishing that. I'm on issue number three. That shit's fire so far. I picked up Multiversity, and I've also got... Uh, actually, that one's somewhere around here. I got Superman Red Sun to also read. So I've been getting more on it, uh, just not as much as the weekly stuff. Let's see. Uh, the dream job to do what you love. Marco, that is, that's the answer, man. I... I love comics. I love talking about it. Um, I could probably do more as far as sponsorships go and just shit like that. Uh, but I'm not, I don't know. I guess I'm really not interested in doing that type of stuff. I don't, I don't like to promote things and talk about things that I'm personally not interested in. Like I would hate to have to like talk about something constantly that I just don't like. And I felt as though in the past when some people have approached me about sponsorships, that's what it would have been. And it would have been me just like showcasing some product like, oh, this brand new comic. Oh, it's so cool. I love it so much. You should check it out. It's great. When in reality, I don't want to peddle that bullshit on somebody if I don't actually approve of it myself. Just because you're paying me doesn't mean I'm going to like, I don't know. I just don't want to get caught up in that type of shit where I'm just not happy with promoting something like that. Uh... <laughs> uh obs dude i i was obsessed with roswell growing up oro burros i was obsessed with roswell and now henny says weather balloons that's the, that's the new thing i don't think they're aliens though i i think it's just fucking other countries spying on every other country i mean america spies on everybody so now all of a sudden they're saying oh my god all these like people are spying on us come on we're spying on them everybody's spying on each other it is what it is uh, but Roswell, every time, every time a new Roswell thing or like Loch Ness monster Bigfoot popped up on Sci-Fi as I, when I was a little kid, I was like, "Ooh, yeah, we're watching this every single time." Uh, do about forty percent each for DC and Marvel. Oh, for DC and Marvel, twenty percent independent. I'd say, I'd say for me, 
it's probably 60% indies, and then the rest is Marvel with, like, maybe one DC or two DCs a week. Like, this week for DC, I'm going to read One Bad Day uh, and the new Superman, which means we should probably start talking about some of these books because some of these people have been really looking forward to. Um, but that's just, you know... That's just kind of how it is. If something pops up for DC and I'm reading it, it's like, sweet, I'll read this this week. But even as far as Marvel goes, I tend to – I haven't even been picking up a lot of the newer stuff. I've just been going with my ongoing series. Uh, KO, I totally agree with that too. Indies are on the rise. Marvel's falling. If, to be completely honest, I – as kind of an outsider looking in, not reading a ton of DC, I've been really enjoying the shit that – uh I've been reading for DC. I will say that I've been really enjoying it. I've been liking it more than I've been reading. Uh, I've been enjoying Marvel stuff. Uh, DC vs. vampires turned into a great series. Uh, I liked the first couple of issues, but I realized I would rather read that in a hardcover. So I stopped getting the single issues. Uh, Bueller spotlight spotlights, a coffee company and see that probably works well for him because he's, uh, uh, he does, I know his, his live stream when he used to do it was coffee and comics. Like he did a lot of shit with coffee. Like, see, that's the thing. If you love coffee as and a coffee company wants to sponsor you, I mean, hell yeah, of course I'd be all about that. Um, so that one makes sense for him. K bar, not gonna lie. Got a lot of respect for you to do that. Uh, it's, it's not, it's not worth it to me. Uh, I, I like to uh, real rude. That's really, I like to keep it real with you guys. I, like I said, I'm not. I'm not just going to accept money and uh, say, like, I believe in this and just be a fucking yes man. That's that's stupid. That's that's fucking lying to you guys then. And that's just uh, that's a waste of everybody's time. We'll put it that way. I'm not doing a good job promoting. Then I'm lying to you guys. And it's one of those fucking things. That's stupid to me. Uh, what do I do for a living? I work at my LCS uh, kind of part time. I do work with Dynamite uh, Publishing Company. That's kind of like a little part-time thing. And then I just spend time doing YouTube stuff as well. Uh, so I do a lot of – I do s uh, multiple different part-time things. The shop used to be full-time, uh, but now I just upload all their eBay listings. I do that stuff for them. So I guess that's kind of full-time. I do the Wednesday stream with Dynamite um, for the experience. That's always a lot of fun. I make content for them as well. And, and I try to do what I can as far as making content. I, I just, I fucking love doing it as much as I can. Uh, let's see. Kingdom Come is epic. Dude, the artwork is so good. And like I said, I think I'm like two pages into the third issue. I was a little surprised to see it's only four issues, but it's been so good so far. There are no UFOs. The distance between plants is too great. Dude, I'm, all right. Tinfoil hat's back on. UFOs are out there. There's something out there. There's 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 something. There's got to be something out there. I refuse to go to the rest of my life thinking that there's there's not. Tinfoil hats back off. All right. Uh, Batman Scooby Doo series slaps. They got that this week. No, that's cool though. I th I heard the last one was really cool. Uh, all right, all right, all right. I grew up a Marvel guy. Sad to say that today DC and Indies are leaps and bounds. See, that's the thing. Marvel, it's just so much garbage, man. Um, like, we'll be talking about it soon, though. Uh, Nightwing, I heard great things about Nightwing. I think when the new writer picked up, who the hell is even the writing on this one right now? Is it the same guy, Tom Taylor? Mm, I don't know. I think I was reading around issue 80. I think I read like five issues around 80, and I thought it was really good. But it was one of those things I kept telling myself, like, I just don't care about reading this. Um, so I didn't want to keep paying for it, which is pretty much. And that's another thing, speaking of, as far as reviews go, and everyone always says, like, oh, you should get more books. You should review these books. You should do this. I got to buy these books, just like all of you guys. Um, I got no companies handing out books to me saying, like, hey, check this out. You should read this. You should uh, do that. It's like, yeah, I, sh I should read it. And if you want me to read it, um, send me a PDF or something. I'll fucking review it. Um, I'll go from there, but I'm not, uh, like I would love to read all the new series. I would love to talk about all the new series with you guys. Um, but that's just, that's just one of the things I, I just physically can't afford all these damn books. They're a lot of money, especially now that they're even more money and a lot of them suck. So if I hit the lottery, I mean, I'll read all these books for you guys. <laughs> if I hit the lottery, I'll quit and I'll read fucking all the new comic book day books and then I'll just, I'll just give them all away then. Uh, let's see what else. Same writer. All right, cool. I thought it was Tom Taylor. 
I enjoy all of your content. One of the reasons I watch is for the indie horror content. I see your love. Oh my god, I love horror books. That's like that's my that's my jam. I'm a superhero guy now diving into indies. Nice mix. That is a good mix. Uh, but horror stuff is definitely my jam. If it's a new horror series, new indie horror series, I'm grabbing it. 100%. Uh, you should check out Shutter. Shutter Magazine. Is Shutter Magazine? Uh, I was going to say, if you're talking about the uh, the app, like the, uh, what is it? Like the, I don't know, like Netflix, one of those. I have I have that, and that shit's awesome. Shutter Magazine. No shit. Let's look it up. September. Hmm. All right. I'll have, to, I'll have to take a peek at that. That's pretty cool. I didn't even know about it. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm an astrobiologist. Damn. All right. That's cool. So I thought a lot about this. Uh, see, I'm not. I was just the guy that was in the military that worked on aircrafts. <laughs> so, so I don't have any knowledge like that. But... uh. Uh, Ryan, have a great night, everybody. Air, keep up the great work, brother. Man, thank you so much, Ryan. Uh, thank you for hanging out. Have a good night, buddy. Stay safe. The only thing we're going to do this week is the Flash. Loving Jeremy Adams' run is Flash. Let's bring it up. And I'm from the UK. I watch a show every single week before I decide on what to buy. Thanks for having me. Oh, dude, Karina, thank you so much. I appreciate that. How long is the one minute war story supposed to? Oh, I'm getting shuttered. I got. I definitely gotta check out that magazine more, but definitely check out Shutter, uh, the app for movies and shit. They got really good stuff on there. I don't think it's that expensive. Uh, I know I had it years ago, and it was like four dollars or five dollars or something. And the app was garbage, but the movies were great. Now the app is fantastic. I think it's like seven or eight dollars, but uh, still very quality content on there. Uh, Flash always had cool covers too. I always looked at the Flash covers. Yeah, that's cool. That's good stuff. Uh, here's going to be probably the big... Actually, no. We're going to talk about this one, too. Uh, I saw a few people mention it earlier in the stream. Uh, Batman Superman World's Finest 12. Let's see. This is a pretty cool cover. So, Scream of the Chaos Monkey. That's good that you guys have been enjoying it, though. Sadly, I'm not reading it. 12 issues. I'm here till 6.30 and the news starts. Uh, I'll be going... I'll be going... Uh, probably pushing towards 7.00. I like everything about the newest Flash run. Uh, it ends in March. I don't really like Wally, which to me is a good indicator and good indication of how good of a writer Adams is. Hmm. Cool. All right, here's gonna be the big one for me. Uh, actually, shit, yeah. So I guess I'm reading two from DC this week. Uh, Superman one, brand new Dawn of DC series. Uh, so I'm guessing Dawn of DC is like their new Fifty Two rebirth. This is like their I don't know. They're restart again. The dawn of DC. Uh, $5 cover price. Shit happens. It is what it is. 32 pages. Bunch of different covers. Oh, this one looks cool. Foil. Oh, man. I wonder what the foil is on this one. It's foil, right? Yeah, foil variant. Oh, man. I wonder. Yeah, watch it be like that little ass freaking speck right there. That would be the foil right in the center. That would suck. Swamp Thing, Green Hell, Black Label is dark. It's great. Just took it. Oh, that, yeah, Marco, I remember, uh, I remember doing the, the video for it like two weeks ago at this point. I was like, I was like, hold on. I was like, number two. I said, when the hell did the first one come out? I saw it was like a year ago. I was like, I'm glad. It, I don't even remember if I read it. I followed Wally. Oh, sorry, Teen Titans. It's just a publishing initiative, not a total line. Oh, okay. I assumed it was going to be like a, a fresh relaunch. I'm still going to grab it, though. I'm excited for it. It's more like a rebirth. Okay. Uh, this is another one. If you guys... So I have been reading all of these. Uh, my favorite has probably been Bane. I really like the Bane issue. Uh, I also read... I think it was Riddler. I read the um, Mr. Freeze issue. I did not read the Cat Catwoman one. But I'm going to be gra I'm going to be reading this one. Probably going to read it digitally. I tend to read DC digitally just because I already am running low on just everything as far as uh, stock or like, you know, all my, all my shit. I'm running out of room, but this has been just big one shots, $8 price tag. That's the only downfall of this, but I've always felt like I'm getting my money's worth at least. 
uh, the follow looks great in person. Are you going to do a review on the new Snow White? Who who makes it? Nothing. Are you going to do a review on the new Snow White zombie comic? Scout. Oh, Scout. So what the what the hell is going on with Scout? They uh, on the League of Comic Geeks website, it's always listed like a shitload of books are coming out. And I just know all these books are not coming out because they're never showing up at my shop. Like, uh, let's see what we're looking at for this week. Uh, oh, what's going on? When in doubt, just new comics this week. Let's see. So, like, what are we looking at for Scout this week? Six. Like, these are not showing up in my shop. I know they're not. Hmm. I wonder when it comes out. Well, if it ever pops up, I'll definitely read it. Because I'm a big fan. I think Scout puts out some good stuff. Superman's foils have been the whole cover lately. That's cool. Um, but this Clayface one, also really cool. I'm excited to... 1 in 100. Jesus Christ. Probably looks better in person. I like this one. Yeah, definitely. So... Uh, with that being said, definitely check out these if you have a light week or use, maybe they put them in the back bins. Uh, these one bad day issues have been fucking awesome. Uh, Deceased, I think this is the end of the series. Deceased is always really fun. 60, 6 out of 9 people have liked it. Average rating of 2.8. Well, apparently this one hasn't been a lot of fun. Oh, it's 8 issues. Okay, so it's not the end of the series though. Uh, oh, this is the one you were just talking about. So, who just said the NWA? Someone in chat said NWA. I don't. Uh, uh, looks like it's a little. Oh, there we go. Taggy Productions, DC War of the Undead Gods is an NWA homage. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. I'm surprised a lot of people aren't talking about this one though. Um, usually covers like that usually uh, pick up a little, a little speck. Black Adams. I stopped reading it. Same thing. I got a little bored with it. it wasn't bad, but meh. There's so many. There's so many good books out there. I just didn't think that was gonna be it. Let's check out Marvel. All right, got a pretty big week. All right, so someone earlier in the stream. Uh, I don't think it was Marco. Let's see. Somebody talked about it. Wherever they are. Wherever you may be, who was talking about ASM earlier. KO, go have a good night, buddy. Stay safe and enjoy the news. All right. So for this issue, it's a little bit bigger of an issue. Uh, Joe Kelly, Terry Dodson are not going to be on the series after this one. Uh, I don't know who's taking over off the top. Of my Is that Bruce Willis? Hold on. <laughs> That's really sad news that we got on Bruce Willis, but uh, I'm not going to lie. This uh, That could be a young Bruce Willis, right? Right, you gotta look up young Bruce Willis. All right, Bruce. <laughs> I see it. I could. I could see it. That's pretty funny. Oh yeah. Uh, all right. Let's get let's get Marvel back up. All right, so we were talking about ASM. Terry Dodson, Joe Kelly aren't going to be on it anymore. Someone was talking about a cover to spec on. I don't know. I don't think whoever it was said which cover it was. What's up with the fire? That is Bruce. That, yeah, all right, yeah, that's poor Bruce Willis. He is a stud. Man, all right, at least everyone else thinks it looks just like him too. I thought so. I thought it looks like him. So, like I said, I don't know if that person's still watching, but if you're if you are watching, uh, I don't know which cover you're talking about specking on. I can only assume it's probably the David Nakayama. Um, but if you want, or no, the bells, no, you said this one, the Stormbreakers. I don't know. I don't know what would make this one spec worthy, but I remember you said the Bal uh, Bazaldua 
I don't know what would make that spec worthy. But I don't think there's going to be, in my opinion, anything too spectacular about this issue. Uh, Preston, what's going on, bro? Hope you're doing well tonight, buddy. Thanks for popping in. Uh, we're on Marvel. We were talking about a lot of fun stuff. Uh, we found out Bruce Willis is on the cover of uh, the Black Adam issue number eight. I think it was number eight. Uh, it's the next ASM. Oh, uh, with the Hulk homage, the next ASM. Let's see if we can bring it up real quick. Um, let's see. ASM. Which one? Are, which one is this? 20. 21. And you said it's with the Hulk homage. Oh, for the Disney? Is that what it is? Disney makes money go burr. Ain't that the truth? All right. If someone wants to spec on something... I'm not telling you this is financial advice, but I think that's a really cool cover. I think that's a really cool cover for a Hulk homage for it being that. Why? I mean, why is it on ASM? I couldn't tell you, but I think it's really cool. Uh, I will say that much. I like it. Uh, speaking of I liking it, I think the new Thor series... Uh, well, it's not new, 31 issues, I think has been okay. Uh, Kate's is not the writer on it anymore. It's this Torin Gronbeck. Uh, it also says Sherilyn Eaton as a writer. Um, well, your name's not on the cover, so I'm not sure what she has to do with it, but uh, I think Torin Gronbeck has done a pretty solid job with it so far. Uh, let's see. Only the 1 through 100 Disney homage books have been getting any traction. There are too many of these. See, that's the other thing, Michael. There are a lot of, uh, a lot of these Disney covers now. They're not like, they're not unique and they're not, I guess I don't want to call them special. Um, now if they did one, like if they didn't do any of these Disney covers and they just did Hulk, well, I'm sure a lot of people will be all over it. But when you can see ahead of time that there's going to be a lot of these covers coming out, I think it loses its, you know, loses its specialness. And put it that way. Uh, these covers are usually pretty cool. Planet of the Apes. So is there gonna be is there gonna be a Planet of the Apes series? Is that why they keep doing all this shit? Here's a Donnerman. Eh, not bad. I think the nicest cover is probably the main cover, wherever that is. Yeah. We'll see how it goes, though. Henny, you dropped Thor. I don't blame you. Uh, John, Thor's been such a disappointment. That See, and this is the shit that I always talk about. It's Donny Cates. He's got the greatest idea in existence, swear to God. He's always got such a good idea. And it's almost as if he's got so many awesome ideas that he's just ready to write his next idea. Whatever he's writing, he just says, fuck it, I don't want to do it anymore. Let's just start the next one. So it's like... If it's a five-issue arc, the first issue is stellar. And then the next one's just as good. And the third issue's like, okay. And then the fourth issue's just like, all right, this is still good. And then the fifth issue just leads to the next idea. And it's like, damn it, you did it again. Um, that's how I always feel. And I think this Thor series, like you said, after it started off incredible. Dude, those first five issues, I was like, dude, this is going to be like the best Thor series I've read in a very long time. Yo, like this is really good. And then all of a sudden, it's those two mini-series just... Or the two mini-issues uh, in between. It's like, all right, this kind of sucks. It's setting something up, obviously. And then it just... The whole thing's just been a letdown. All the shit... Like, they talked about Molnir having all of those issues for the longest time. And it's just... And then what? It turned into that, and that was boring as hell, too. The only other one that I can remember that I was like, this is legit was everything going on with Donald Blake. That was wild. I loved it. But like always, the ending was a letdown to me. It's like this massive buildup. Donald Blake escaped. That entire world he was in, he completely destroyed. And then all of a sudden, it's like this big battle between Thor, Donald Blake, and everybody else. What was it, like four panels? He got his ass whooped, and then he got sent to whatever gulag that he was in where he's getting tortured by... Uh, Low key, I was like, dude, this is like, this is stupid. Uh, but it was so good. And then that, and everything that happened with Molnir right after that, I thought the design on whatever the hell that character was supposed to be, I thought that was terrible design. 
and, and it just wasn't a fun anything. I was really surprised, though, at how much I liked that Thor Banner of War, the tie-in event. I thought it was just going to be a cheesy, stupid cash grab between both of the ongoings that he was writing, and it was surprisingly pretty good. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was a good story that got set up, but then it was just back to crap again. Uh, let's see. Uh, agreed. Kate's Donny Kate's is writing Vanish. Uh, I th I thought that was on a hiatus too, but I'm not 100 percent sure. I know uh, he's taken a hiatus from basically everything from Marvel, um, but I thought he also did with Vanish, but I'm probably wrong. Uh. Let's see. His Venom Cates. I will say his his Venom Cates is probably the best thing that I've read from him. Um, Funk Comics, what's going on, buddy? But as far as his Venom series goes, I kind of felt the same thing, but I will I will stand up. I've said this before. I'll stand up for him, uh, for Venom. I thought the ending was bad, and I almost feel as though it was Marvel's fault that Venom was bad. I feel as though they wanted him to rush an ending so they could wrap it up at the big 200th issue or whatever that was so they could start fresh on a brand new series that basically picked up with Donny Cates' run. Um, and a new Venom series is garbage. It's pretty, it's pretty fucking bad. But I will say that about his Venom series. While I loved it, I think it felt rushed, and I almost feel like Marvel wanted him to end it. Just my thoughts. Uh, Fall Sunrise is super dope. Uh, that's that's good. I didn't like the first issue, probably because of the, probably because of the artwork. I didn't really like the art. Um, it's it's not that it's bad. It's tough to digest. I think there's a lot of swirls. There's a lot of shit going on. There's a lot of colors. It's a lot of just in your face stuff. Um, so I'll probably read it. I ended up reading Silver Surfer Black all at once, and I can only imagine that's how I'm going to read Fall Sunrise as well. Uh, Deadpool, surprisingly really good series too. I'm really liking this one. I think Alyssa Wong has done a great job capturing Deadpool's personality, in my opinion. Uh, that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that one. This is a cool cover from Miko Suyon. I like that. But yeah, it's probably the best way to describe Deadpool. I think she captured his personality great. Um, have I read ISOM by Eric July? Mm, no, but I also should probably look it up. ISOM Eric July. Ripaverse. Oh, no, I have not read anything from the Ripaverse. I have heard about it, though, but I do not, I have not read anything, um, from that. I don't even know how you get it. Cover price, $35. What is this, a fucking... Release date. Oh, it came out last year. Oh, no shit. I may have to check it out. Uh, what else are we doing? Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying the Deadpool series, too. I'm, I'm talking. Everyone I'm talking to that's read it is like, oh, this is actually like a really good series. Um, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Uh, let's see. Carnage. Carnage is great. Uh, I'm really surprised at how much I'm liking it now. I was a little back and forth on it earlier. Ooh, that's a cool cover. I was a little back and forth on it in the beginning. I liked how it was set up where there's like two plots going on and you've got the mystery or not mystery, but you've got Carnage and his little fucking lackey. And then you've got Detective Neely on the other side trying to find Carnage and everything going on. So I thought that was cool. And then it went into the universe, like into space and different realms. And I wasn't a fan of that, but it set up the next arc really nice. Um, it looking back on it, they needed to do that type of stuff. Uh, so I'm excited to see where they go with it. Uh, you can get it for 35 on a site, and it's oh, it's 112 pages. All right, that's cool. I was gonna say it's got to be like some sort of uh, trade paperback for 35 dollars. Like it, it can't just be issue number one. She, all right, Casey. Uh, she Hulk is fun. Glad to see it's being continued. Uh, that's cool. I only read the first issue. I didn't dislike it. I, I didn't really have an opinion on it, I guess. It was one of those things where I, I I didn't think it was an ongoing at the time, so I was like, am I going to continue on with this or am I not going to continue on with this? And it fell into I'm not going to continue on with it. Uh, but I'm glad you're liking it. You're not the only person that I've talked to that's liking it, so that's good to know too. I have not enjoyed the new Carnage run. Uh, like I said, I like the way it started. 
I thought it was interesting. I thought it was really unique. And probably my favorite issue was the one that had nothing to do with the rest of the series. Uh, that kind of little tie-in one shot that they did where they went into St. Estes, the orphanage, and they did that whole thing. That was probably my favorite issue. I didn't like I didn't like the space stuff. I didn't like the different realms. Um, so I, you know, I can I can see where you're coming from about not really enjoying it. I'm looking forward to it now going forward. Uh, I think the setup is really good. I like Rom V. We'll see what happens though. Uh, Immoral X Men issue number one, brand new thing coming out. That's gonna be cool. Hopefully for your, you X Men fans, Sins of Sinister tie in. Uh, according to a lot of people from last Tuesday, or I didn't do one last Tuesday because it was Valentine's Day, but the other Tuesday that we did this stream, uh, a lot of people were saying Sins of Sinister was really cool. Uh, next month issue of Carnage to cover is ridiculous. Oh, let's check it out. Let's see what the cover looks like. Hmm. What are we on? 10. That's what I thought. Damn, that's a cool cover. Oh, this one's cool. The Mastrazo. Oh my god, that's a sweet cover. Yeah, I like that. That's a cool cover. If that, that's, I don't know if that's the one you're talking about. That cover. I mean, the main cover's nice, but that one's really sweet. Uh, but outside of that... Uh, there's the fall. We'll talk about that too. Let's see what else they got. Eh, decent. Uh, I didn't like Deadly Neighborhood Spider Man. I didn't think that was good. I didn't read any of the Doctor Afra. I have the Omnibus, um, but I heard it's really good too. Um, oh, Breezy, man, thank you for the dono. That means a lot to me. Glad to see someone who is honest about their opinion on comics. Not very common these days. Much love, brother. Keep up the work. No, thank you very much. That means a lot to me. Um, I'm glad you're enjoying the content. I'm glad you're enjoying, you know, what we have to talk about. This is a, it's always a good time doing this stuff with you guys. I, I fucking love doing it. Uh, check out Strange Academy 4, the magic cover. Oh, wait, issue number 11. Yeah, that, that was for issue number 11. Uh, the one that we were just looking at before. I had to drop main X-Men run. I don't know what the fuck is going on anymore. SMK, I totally agree with you. I ended up dropping X-Men quite a while ago because I just, I just couldn't keep up with it. I... I couldn't possibly keep up. I read House and Powers of X, thought it was cool, started Dawn of X, and all of a sudden it's like, it's not Dawn of X, it's fucking Excalibur from what I remember, and there was like four other, five other series going on at the time, and I just kept telling myself, I was like, dude, I'm done. I am I can't keep going on X-Men. And then my shop at the time was saying the same thing. It's like more and more tie-ins were coming out, and they basically had a series for like every character at that point. And I asked him, I said, like, I know you're an X-Men fan. Like, how do you how do you do this? Like, you obviously own this shop so you can read everything. But do you actually read everything? And he's like, no, I do not read all these books. He said, this is what I tell everybody that wants X-Men. They said, he said, you need the main ongoing, whatever it is at the time. I don't even know what the main X-Men is right now. Pick a character you like and maybe one tie-in series. That's how you read X-Men and you still probably can't get the entire story, which sucks. But he said, that's what you should do with it. Uh, I hated Deadly Neighborhood Spider-Man. I, The artwork was great, but that first issue was, it was terrible. The first issue was terrible. And you know what? I feel the same way with Star Wars at this point too. Now, uh, we can, maybe not as much this week, but I'll bring up next week's right after this. Um, we can, I can talk about Star Wars then. But Star Wars is becoming the same way as X-Men and it's ridiculous. Uh, Savage Avengers, this is the final issue. Be on the lookout for that, guys. I think there's a cover B for this one. They usually only have cover A's, uh, Shaw variant. Final issue. I don't know why they keep doing it with Savage Avengers. Savage Avengers, I feel like, is always so popular. Every time they come out with a Savage Avengers series, uh, people really enjoy it. And they always end it with, like, nine or ten issues. Like, they don't, they don't go on with it. Uh, yeah, I was enjoying Savage Avengers. Yeah, see, people really enjoy it. Is it? Immortal X-Men star and Sinister is hilarious. The best, worst villain. I picked up X-Force, but then grabbed two. See, it's like the same thing. Uh, every, that's what everyone keeps saying with X-Men right now. It's just too many characters, so much shit going on, so much just like stories are happening, and it's a lot to keep up with. And financially, it's a lot to keep up with, too. That's the crazy thing. Uh, let's see. Strange Academy finals. Yeah, Strange Academy. Strange Academy is the shit. I love this series. Uh, if you were interested in Strange Academy, 
I got to tell you straight up, this says issue four. You cannot start with Strange Academy Finals. You can't do it. You're going to be fucking lost, um, and you're not going to like it. You got to read all of it. So it's like 15 issues, I think, before that, which still blows my mind. I, 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 don't, I can't fathom why they just restarted it. It's, it's, it's like nothing changed. It's the same writer. It's the same everything. Uh, same artist. But they decide to restart, call it finals, and make it an issue one. I hate when Marvel does that crap. It's so annoying. Tiger Division has been a nice surprise. I wasn't expecting anything. It's been written pretty well. That's awesome. I read the first issue. I I didn't dislike it. I was like, this isn't bad. Uh, but I think issue four is actually going to be a bigger issue for you guys. Um, I know that's coming out this week. We'll get there in a second. I'm pretty positive this is the final issue for Doctor Strange as well. Just a heads up for you guys who are reading this one. Like I said, yeah. The artwork's very unique. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it. But I will read it all at once. The first issue wasn't bad. Uh, but I just didn't want to pay for it, if we're being honest here. Punisher War Journal, base. Origin of the War Journal, if you're a Punisher fan. I don't know if John Spilios, if you're still in the house, definitely got to check that one out. I'm probably going to pick it up as well. Uh, Torin Grombeck again writing this one. Damn. She's all over the place. So that's cool. Uh, so I'm definitely going to check that one out. Uh, let's see. Same, I've only got Yoda for Star Wars. Yeah, there's so much shit going on. Glenn, I'm glad you're enjoying the Savage Avengers series. I read the first few issues. I actually really enjoyed it. Marvel will keep on this track, and in a few years, every issue will be a new number one. I, well, they they just did that. Is uh, is this come out this week? Hold on. Uh, no, I think it's, I thought it was this week. Maybe it was last week. Hold on, super quick. Or no, it's next week. Cool, so we'll talk about that super quick as well uh, once we hit this last issue. Uh, so then Tiger Division, we were just talking about how this one's been surprisingly pretty good. Uh, there is an origin in this one, so be on the lookout for that. If you are reading this series, um, I don't want to call it like a spec issue, but you know, be on the lookout for it, I guess. There's an origin and probably an underrated series. The other Tiger Division stuff does sell for a decent chunk of change right now. Uh, but that's everything from this week. But this is what I wanted to talk about super quick. Uh, so this is next week's Marvel. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say is the Star Wars stuff. Oh, hold on. Oh, Warhammer stuff. Oh, I didn't know that she did that too. Ed, new to comics, enjoying your channel, still learning about them, uh, but liking FF1 through 4. Oh, man, dude, enjoy the hobby. Dude, the hobby's great. Uh, so there's something for everybody. Check out all the different publishers. Don't just stick to the big ones like Marvel and DC. Image is great. DC, well, I just mentioned DC, but Boom Studios has fantastic stuff as well. And there's a ton of other indie companies as well that put out great books. Uh, so no matter what you like, whether you want to stick to superhero stuff or maybe you like horror, there's they're out there. There's a lot of good books for you. Joseph L. Predator is restarting at one. The only reason that I can support them on Predator starting at one is I'm almost positive it's going to be an entirely new story. So it's like a brand new, just brand new everything to Predator. So if that is the case, I understand it. Not that I like it, but it does make sense compared to some of the other ones that they do. Marvel needs less titles. Ain't that the fucking truth? Increase quality and decrease number of titles, and they'll probably sell the same amount of comics. Yeah, I guarantee they could cut half of X-Men and probably half of Star Wars, and it wouldn't make a difference to a lot of people. Uh, I didn't like FF1. Yeah, that, that's what we were talking about earlier a little bit. They were It was like a thing, one shot. That's how it looked. I didn't read it, though, but it looked just like that. So Breezy, or Breezy says it is a brand new story. That's what I thought it was going to be because the Alien series is like half-assed doing that. They started off at a number one after they went to like issues one through 15, which was really odd. Uh, but it's still been a really good series, too. Read the synopsis on Punisher. Unfortunately, sounds like a pass. Uh, I, all I saw was that it's going to be the origin of the war journal. I'm definitely going to take a peek at it when I get there. Before he is the Punisher, Frank Castle is a husband, a father, and a Marine, not necessarily in an order in the story from between pages of the Punisher. Frank tries to come home but finds it impossible to leave the war behind him. See, I think – so if you're – Michael, I don't know if you're reading the main – punisher series but they kind of do that they kind of hint at this type of a story in the flashbacks with him and his wife once he gets home from the war and i love the flashbacks i really do i think they've done a really good job with it so i'm hoping that this is kind of on par with that i mean what we're obviously going to see like i said i'm going to take a peek at it 
but I think this is I think this one has potential to be good. Art looks rushed. Ah, see, I didn't take I didn't take a look at any of the inside stuff. But I'm hoping this slightly ties in with the main series, especially seeing this cover. Uh, and that's what he looks like in the new series. So I'm hoping that kind of goes with it. Uh, Murder World's actually what I wanted to talk about when I went uh, when I went forward a little bit. The ideal city, lever takes in the comic book industry should definitely be quality over content or quality over quantity. I totally agree. I think everyone would benefit. I think writers would benefit. I think they'd probably make more money by writing more quality stories without less tie-ins, less uh, events. The Marvel events are mind baffling. They are just they blow my mind. It's like you've got multiple events going on. Their their events are so watered down, and they're basically meaningless at this point. Uh, make something good. Make it worthwhile. Make it have an effect on the Marvel world instead of just like, okay, here's another fucking event we're throwing at you. It's going to be really cool. It's going to have 100 tie-ins that nobody's going to read, and then we're going to tie it into your ongoing series and piss you guys off because you're not reading the event either. Uh, they They love doing that crap. See that was that's what I'm thinking, Breezy. That would be really cool. Um, I hope, I hope it ties in with the main one like that. Uh, but Henny Henny mentioned Murder World, and before I get into the Star Wars nonsense, that's actually what really pisses me off about Marvel. So Murder World Game Over One, I picked up the first Murder World issue, and I was like, this was cool. I like this. And all of a sudden, it was like Murder World, Wolverine, Moon Knight. I think they did Spider-Man, Murder World now game over. And this is the last issue of the series. They're all number one. I thought all of it was tie-ins. So I've been waiting for an issue two this entire time. And it turns out there was no issue two. It is what it is. Like, it is just the murder world. And I was like, that, that's kind of, like, that bums me out. Like, 100%. If Marvel wants to have this many comics, they should release new comics every two weeks instead. I think that would be more beneficial, assuming they continue releasing this like mass amount of books. I mean, just, like I mean, look at this quick little sneak peek of next week: Hallow's Eve one, Cosmic Ghost Rider one, Spider Gwen one, Spider Man Unforgiven one, I Am Iron Man one, and then Murder World on top of Rogue and Gamut one. That's that's fucking what two, four, six. That's seven new titles. I'm not getting all of them. I don't even care about a quarter of them. Spider-Man Unforgiven, not getting that. Hallow's Eve, not getting that. Iron Man, Iron Man, the other Iron Man series is good. I ain't getting this one, though. Murder World, you can't just pick that one up because they got all those other ones. Batman One Bad Day, the only reason that I can support that is that they're all one-shots focused around one bad day, and it's a different villain. I get it. Uh, do I wish it was like one, two, and three? I think, if anything, that could be more confusing because now people would be less inclined to pick up maybe issue four when in reality it's just a one shot. Uh, but I totally get where you're coming from. And this is why this is uh, the final thing that I want to talk about with you guys. What we were talking about with like X-Men because X-Men keeps popping up. Look at all the Star Wars next week. Star Wars 32, Mandalorian 8, Han Solo and Chewbacca 10, Star Wars Hidden Empire 4, Star Wars High Republic, The Blade, issue number three, uh, and that's actually the last one. So we got two, four, five. Five Star Wars titles in one week. That is ridiculous. I, If you're a Star Wars fan, I, I don't even understand why you would read all of that. I mean, what Star Wars fans, what are you even interested in? Star Wars 32, probably because that's an ongoing. The Mandalorian, I heard, is the exact same thing as the TV show. Han Solo and Chewbacca 10, I've, I don't know a single person reading that. Uh, Star Wars High Republic, The Blade, I mean, it's probably ties in with the High Republic series, makes sense. Hidden Empire, maybe pick that one up. If I was a Star Wars fan, I'd probably grab Star Wars 32 and Hidden Empire 4. Makes the most sense to me. Uh, but that's all the books coming out this week, guys. We're coming up on 7 o'clock. We've been live for almost two hours. You guys rock. This was a ton of fun, as always. Um, let me know what books you're going to be grabbing. Comment it down below. This was, like I said... Tons of fucking fun. We're going to be doing it again next Tuesday. Um, I'm going to be going live with The Experience tomorrow night, 6 p.m. EST. It's on their channel. Links are all listed down below. Uh, it's a claim auction type of channel. Uh, so they've got a lot of books for sale. Tons of fun stuff. Friday, we're going to be going live. We were talking about it earlier. I always do a bunch of news stuff on Friday. We talk about all the fun things going on in the community. Uh, but I'm going to see about getting some approval from some uh, different creators and we're going to we can watch some of their videos and we're going to like react to them and you know spec stuff 
uh, was it spec stuff and like investment stuff. Talk about chat, see what they got to say about it. But uh, seriously, thank you again, everybody. If you want to become a member of the channel, I got my Patreon listed down below. You get access to Discord, early access to videos, uh, do monthly giveaways, and you know, it's fun stuff. Let me know if you have any questions about it. Links, every all the links are down there. Uh, but seriously, I appreciate all the support from all of you tonight. You guys rock. This was at. Tons of fun. I'm, I'm going to keep saying it. I love talking with you guys. This is some of my favorite times of the week. I love doing this. I love making my other videos. Um, but seriously, stay safe, everybody. Thank you again. And I've got my top 10 list coming out on Thursday. And we're going live again on Friday. So stay tuned for that. And uh, it's going to be a fun time. I'll see you then, guys.